In this video, we're going to be making an arcade project and we're going to use one of the tutorials on the arcade make code website called Lemon Leak. So if you go to the make code website and on the make code website, if you scroll down and then click on the arcade link, this will open up the arcade website. So you can start a new project or you can do one of the tutorials. We're going to do the Lemon Leak tutorial. So this is a, a little game. So click on start tutorial and that's going to open up the project editor and it's also going to include the step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this. Okay, so let's take a look at this game. So in the game, you are going to be a lemon and we're going to set a, uh, a countdown of 30 seconds and the aim of the game is to stay away from the strawberries. The more times you touch the strawberries, the higher your damage will be. So the aim of the game is to keep your damage as low as possible. So let's get going with it. Okay, so step number one. So we're going to add in to the on start block. We're going to add in a set background color and choose purple. And then we're going to add in a set my sprite to, to a type of sprite, uh, to a type of sprite of kind player. And then we're going to add in the move sprite with buttons. So let's do these one by one. So let's get the background. So set background color. That's in the scene toolbox. So we're going to set that to purple. Okay. The next one is to bring in a set my sprite two. And we're going to draw it. So just let me check. Yeah. So they don't rename it. Sometimes you, if you want, you can rename it to, you know, player one or strawberry or whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the gallery and we're going to get a strawberry. There we go. Done. So you could draw your own one, but you know, there's some good ones in the gallery. We're going to use those. And then finally, we're going to go into the controller toolbox and get a move my sprite with buttons. So what that means, this block here is really handy because just by using that one block, it programs the up, down, left and right arrows to move your sprite. Moving on to the next step, step number three. So to keep the lemon from leaving the screen, we're going to drag in a set my sprite stay in screen block. So let's do that first. So set my sprite stay in screen and we're going to slide the switch to on. So it's off by default. Click that and it slides to on. Then we're going to find the start countdown block and put it at the end and change the time from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. So start countdown is in the info toolbox and change it to 30. So next step, step number four. Now we're going to pull out an on game, on game update every block from the game toolbox. And we're going to set the interval time to 1000 milliseconds or one second. So let's do that. So into the game toolbox on game update. So let's just rearrange here a little bit. And we're going to change 500 milliseconds to 1000 milliseconds or one second. Next, we're going to go into the sprites toolbox and drag this set projectile to block and drop it inside the game on, on game update every. So set projectile two. So what this is doing here is every one second, it's going to create a new projectile. And we are going to go to the gallery and get, uh, oh, I've done this the wrong way around, isn't it? Yeah, so we should have the strawberry as the enemy and the lemon as your character that you control. The VX and the VY values control the velocity of the X axis, so left to right of the projectile and the Y axis, so uh, down to uh, up to down. So if we just refresh this, you'll see that it's coming across at 50 speed and then downwards at 100. So it's kind of a sharp angle down, but we're going to be changing these, I think, to some random numbers. So it introduces a bit of randomness of the speed and direction of the strawberries. So step number five. So we're going to get a pick random and put it in the VX slot 
and change it to, to 0 to minus 50. So sorry, minus 50 and minus 50. And then we're going to duplicate that for the VY block. So let's go into math, get a pick random. So both of these should be minus 50. And we will duplicate it and then drop one into VY, uh, one into VX. Let me drag this down so we can see it all the way out. Okay, so these are coming out at a kind of uniform uh, direction and speed. So it must mean I have something wrong. And just looking here, yes, I should. Here, let's bring up the tip. So instead of minus 50 and minus 50, I should have minus 50 and 50 for the second one. So that's where I've gone wrong. So let me just update those to 50 and 50. And this should refresh. Now we've got different strawberries coming in at different angles and different speeds. So we can see we've a bit of randomness going on here. Um, okay, so let's move on to step number six. So we're going to drag in an on sprite of kind of kind overlaps into the workspace. And so let's do that first. So on sprite of kind player. So this block here detects when two different sprites overlap or crash into each other. So we're going to set the kind for other sprite to projectile. So when player overlaps with projectile. So our player is the lemon and our projectiles are the strawberries. And so we're going to click on the plus icon. Sorry, we need to, from the sprites, drag out my sprite start effect block. So my sprite start effect. So, and we are going to change that to spray. So it's already spray and we're going to click on the plus to get more options and set the effect for 200 milliseconds. So 200. Okay. So now when we watch here, if we go in and bump off any of the strawberries, you'll see that the spray effects runs for 200 milliseconds so that's a fifth of a second okay next step so step number seven i think this is the last step to score hits by the strawberries on the lemon drag a change score by from the info toolbox and put it after the my sprite start effect so info and change score by one here's where i find this tutorial a little bit confusing because we're actually not scoring a point we're taking on damage so that's fine. Uh, so just so you know that. So the aim of the game is to keep this number, this damage number, lo as low as possible. You can see each time the a strawberry touches off the lemon, it's increasing. So the aim of the game is to keep that as low as possible for the 30 seconds that the game goes on for. Um, and, and that's your goal. So let's... So let's just change this slightly so what we're going to do is we'll just do a 10 second game and i will play it and see if i can manage okay 10 seconds is maybe a little bit too easy let's let's go for 30 seconds refresh let's see how i do so the strawberries are being quite helpful so far in that they're nicely spaced out, they're not too fast. So I think I'm gonna ace this game though. Maybe I'm being a little bit overconfident. So no damage taken on, eight seconds to go. Can I do it? And it looks like I can. There, all the way at the end, game over. So that's a nice little game. It, it gives you a good idea on creating your own sprites, controlling them, and then creating projectiles and adding a bit of randomness in. So they come in at different angles, different speeds. Uh, you've got a countdown block. You might not have used that before. So that will start it off. And once that elapses, once that gets down to zero, it will be game over. And then you have your score block as well, which we're using for damage in this game. So if you wanted, you could kind of customize the game, make it a little bit more personalized yourself. You could change the colors, you could change the characters and the projectiles. If you want to make it more difficult, you could increase 
the speed at which the projectiles uh, can, can kind of come in and move through the screen. If you do have something like a BrainPad Arcade or one of the devices that lets you download and play the arcade games, you can click on download, choose which device you're using, and that will download a file onto your computer of the, the game you've just created. You then need to connect your device, so your BrainPad Arcade, for example, to your computer using a USB cable and then just send that file from your computer to your to your device and you'll be able to play the game on your device. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions or comments, just comment in our video I below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get our weekly coding projects, make sure to click on subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us make next, just comment in the video below.